Everything is not always a home run. This one here is a wah, wah, wah. Okay. Turn me up a little bit. Hey, what's happening, Stall Gang? Hey, guys, welcome back to the Meat Stall. And today we're going to be doing some stuffed catfish. Correction. I wanted to do some stuffed catfish. I couldn't find any. So we're going to be doing some stuffed flounder. Now, now this recipe here I've seen done a lot of times where people use catfish or they use salmon. I came across some flounder. I like the way flounder. I'm from Eastern North Carolina. I said, hey, why not give it a shot? So I got everything that I'm going to do. I'm going to stuff it with. The flounder filet I got uh, was frozen. It comes vacuum sealed in the pack. And the reason why I chose flounder, because originally I was going to go, which I still might do, I was going to go with this sway filet, uh, but it was kind of narrow, so I didn't think I would be able to get a lot of stuffing inside there. Uh, as the video goes, I may do this one as well, or I may just roll this one up in a pinwheel and uh, fry it in a pinwheel. Who knows? We'll see as we get here. I'm not going to get fancy with seasoning. That's what I'm going to season it with. I'm going to season my, my stuffing with Cajun seasoning. And I'm going to season my fish with Obey. And I got some seasoned fish fry. I'm not going to go with a thousand, a million seasonings that people can't follow anyway. I like to make recipes that's simple and recipes that's good. Also in the stuffing, I'm going in with some garlic, some minced garlic. I got some cream cheese. I saw a half a block. Well, a block, which is it's about eight ounces. I got me some parsley that I'm going to chop up. And I got some green onions that I'm going to chop up. So I'm going to go ahead and set all this stuff aside to get these veggies prepped, take this fish out, uh, and continue with the video. Also, this cream cheese, make sure you set it out because if you don't set it out, it's going to be hard to work with. This, is, this has been sitting out probably for about 45 minutes, so it's going to be soft and cream cheese. Okay, so here's the shrimp that I was telling you about. Uh, these like medium-sized shrimp, tell on. It's already clean in the vein, but they're cooked. I'm kind of hectic, but y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Like I said, we're gonna do this together. So I'm gonna pull these tails off this shrimp, and then we're gonna chop these up in a uh, bite-sized pieces. Okay, here's my uh, my lump crab meat here. Obviously fresh would have been better, but I got it from the can today. And no, I don't got any gloves on today, so. But I'm making this for myself anyway. Let's go in with the green onion. Put the green onions in. And we're gonna fold those into this mixture. Okay, next is going with the parsley. I'm gonna go with half of this first. I think I might have cut a little too much. Gonna go with the shrimp. Fold half of that in at first. Now we're gonna go on with our crab meat. See, crab see me shake it in there. You know what? I want a crab that patty. I'm gonna use all that crap. Now I'm gonna gently fold it in. I did end up adding all of that shrimp and added a little more uh, parsley. So I didn't have a lot of waste. Now this is my minced garlic. I'm gonna go on with uh, a heaping teaspoon. I think that'll be enough to hold it. And I'm gonna go on with some juice from a lemon. I would have had my squeezer thing, but I don't know where it's at. But what you can do to catch the seeds, you can just squeeze it through your hands like this. And this is what I'm gonna season this bad boy with, nothing else. No a thousand seasonings, just some Cajun seasoning. 
And if you measure, I think you should season it to taste because you don't want it to be too salty because that cream cheese got a little salt in it as well. All right, we're about to season this fish. We're going to use nothing more than Obey. One thing that really kind of threw me off, we're going to see how it's going to go, though. You see that? This fish is split. So I got to be careful when putting the, the mixture in so it don't, uh, yeah, this one here is even worse. So we'll see, we'll make it work though. Okay. Now we're gonna go in with our stuffing. And I'm gonna try to get it all the way so you can get a bite of stuffing in every piece of fish. You notice we use cream cheese because cream cheese won't come out. Yeah. Now let's take this piece here. We're going to flip it. And we're going to do it like that. We're going to hit it with some toothpicks to hold it together. Meat stall gang, let's drop this thing into some hot grease. Uh, Alright, let's open up, take a look at it. It wasn't quite 10 minutes. I think it was like 9 minutes with our total cook time. She got so she was uh, she was floating. So we're gonna go ahead and take her down. We're gonna see if we can get out this basket, let her cool off and get a taste test. Well, stall gang, <laughs> everything is not a success. I only cooked this fish for probably about 10 minutes. And I don't know if it's flounder or what have you, but this is what it looked like on the inside. It like I cooked this damn thing to death. So I had to say that this first stuffed fish using flounder was an epic fail. But it tastes good though. Not to fret. I still got two more pieces of fish. And what I'm going to do with those, I'm going to use my same filling. I'm going to wrap those in the pinwheels. All right, we got the oven uh, at 400. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put these in here. I'll put a little butter on the top. I'm gonna put them in here for probably about 10 or 15 minutes until that fish gets nice and cooked and we're gonna bring it out and we're gonna try it again. If the baked fish doesn't come out, this video wasn't a total bust. Uh, while I was waiting for the oven to, to uh, heat up, I got me some rich crackers. I said, I wanna test this out because everything that I have in here is cooked because I used the cook shrimp, the lump crab was already cooked. There's no more than cream cheese, our chives, and our parsley, and a little bit of season when I went in. And, baby, when I tell you about this thing here, 
this right here is off the chain. So if all else fails, you got a seafood dip from watching the stall. Let me check this out again. Delicious. Mm. That's good. Got somebody different at the start of the day. My sister gonna try this out and let me know how it tastes. If it ain't good, lie to me. <laughs> You taste all the stuff in the uh in the stuffing, the chives and I'm usually a fried fish type person, but this is pretty good. <laughs> Alright, stall gang. Let's do a wrap up of this uh this video here. If I had to rate this video, how I like it, from a one to ten, it had to be down to pretty much at like about a four or maybe a three. Um I'm ne I never want to make videos where if something's not good or if I do something that's not right, I'd be like, oh, it's the best stuff in the world. You got to try it. You got to try it. Me, myself, I'll never try this again. Uh, not saying that it can't be a good recipe, but I just think that, or I know, there's probably a few things that, that I did wrong. Uh, number one was probably my selection of fish. Uh, that flounder was real thin. And uh, then when she started to split apart on me, I knew that was going to be a problem. Uh, but it's still, I, I went forward to see how it would come out. Uh, number two, I cooked it entirely too long uh, for that thin piece of fish it cooked. By the time, I don't know if I showed it on the, on the camera, but when I opened it up, there was no stuffing nowhere in sight. It had cooked all the way out. I cooked it too long. But me... One not to give up. I said, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to bake it. So I took my same stuff in, with, that I had, which might I add is a great seafood dip. Now, if you want to use this as a dip, that's it right there. That's that's the best thing that I got out of this video. So, but what I did is I put it in, um, I wrapped it up, put it in a, in a baking pan, and baked it for like 15. So I, I got like 145 in my fish which is a safe temp. I took it out, I let my sister taste it. She tasted it, she said it tastes pretty good. Me, myself, uh, I'm not really big on baked fish, so the, the mouth feel and the texture wasn't there for me. So, I didn't like it. Uh, maybe I try, to, I try to fry it again in a different manner with a different fish. But as far as the, uh, as the the dish, no, I didn't like it. Uh, there may be other recipes out there that can do a, a, a good dish, but this one here, everything is not always a home run. This one here is a wah, wah, wah. All right, Stall Gang, find you some meat and smoke it. Okay. Turn me up a little bit.